Good evening, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here at the British um, Library again. Um, I think you'll find the evening's um, presentations very interesting. I um, founded King of Shades having been made redundant back in 93, and um, ignorance was bliss, I think, where I was concerned with regard to Gillette. I didn't know it was a $59 billion business. Um, I do now, given what they're spending in the market against us. But um, I think what I want to go through this evening is really very briefly some key bullet points and then we're going to obviously hear from the other guys and then take the questions in from you, the audience, which is the most important thing. I'm a big advocate of what I call um, digital dialogue over um, brand broadcast. Um, brand broadcast, that's TV commercials to people who still watch TV. And in fact, I'm in June, um, internet consumption actually overtook TV consumption um, according to a presentation I saw at a Boots major supplier conference yesterday. So there's lots of crazy stuff going on, very fast moving stuff, all very interesting. Um, the background to the slide is deliberately a hurricane. Um, hurricanes move fast and change um, direction often um, without any notice. And what I try to do with King of Shades is to keep myself in the eye of a hurricane, which is sort of an area of low pressure, and it's very calm there. And you keep yourself in that space by being essentially in command of what you're doing with your brand, the um, conversations you're having with your consumer, hopefully generally good, cons good conversations, good feedback, but sometimes not, and we'll come on to Twitter from a customer service perspective. But um, word of mouth used to be the oft sort of used um, word in terms of spreading the good word about your business, certainly in 93 when there was a fax and a phone and that was it, and obviously newspapers and magazines. That's now transformed into word of mouth. And word of mouth is just incredibly powerful because I don't view my biggest competitors as Gillette or Wilkinson Sword or even people who did the Back the Beard campaign courtesy of James Corden, Corden's live TV program. It's actually just a global lack of awareness that there's a brand called King of Shaves that exists and it aims to deliver you um, the King of Shaves. And um, if you haven't tried it, maybe you will. And there's billions of people out there for me to shave. And um, social media and the use of um, channels like that are obviously critical to that. And accelerating that word of mouth into word of mouth is, you know, a, a prime reason why I'm here to chat to you guys today. Secondly, um, content's king. Whoever, own, whoever owns content, whether it's Rupert Murdoch, B Sky B, um, Sky, who I was with this afternoon, um, obviously with football, Content is absolutely king. And where Twitter's concerned, um, don't just witter on about stuff on Twitter, because people, you know what, they've got other things to be doing with their lives rather than where you've drunk coffee and why and who and with and where and what. Far more interesting is how you can condense your product or service or brand message into 140 words in a clever, creative and engaging way, and then drive people into community sites that I'll come on to whether it's um, facebook.com slash king of shades, whether it's youtube.com channel, etc., Because it's only where communities exist that conversations take place. And from a brand owner's perspective, that's scary. Or it can be scary if your product's not that great or you're not doing a great job. Um, but because you're not in control of that conversation, it exists without you being able to moderate it, to control it, to get involved. It's a very scary place for people who are in marketing, in PR, in brand, are concerned. Um, but it can be massively powerful and influential and positive for your business. As Apple, you know, with all the Apple evangelists who evangelize about the iPod, that means everybody thinks they should buy one, and then they do, and makes Apple into a business worth more than Microsoft in very short order. So don't Twitter, t sorry, don't Witter, Twitter, and that means keep it short and simple. Um, digital dialogue versus brand broadcast. Um, this is a space we're in now. The C to C, C, C to C, and C to C is, um, stands for consumer to consumer. So if somebody loves King of Shaves, they tell somebody else via Twitter about King of Shaves. That's really good. If I see that, I'll retweet that. I'll thank them. And then hopefully they'll tell other people, and that word of mouth will spread. The C to C E is um, consumer to celebrity. Um, quite recently, Dom Jolly tweeted out that he was looking for a new razor. About half a dozen King of Shaves followers jumped in, told him to, DM, to follow and DM me. He did. I sent him out a copy of, um, I sent him out some product, a copy of my book, asked for his feedback. Absolutely fantastic. Similarly with Stephen Fry, who's a King of Shaves shaving oil guy. 
um, that I met recently. That consumer to celebrity recommendation, which is, is turning the celebrity to consumer sort of brand broadcast on its head, is very, very interesting because we're all people out there and we're all looking for the best solution. And then CE to, as I said, CE to C. But it can be good or bad. You know, you're not in control of that. Don Jolly might not have liked King of Shades, in which case you might have said, oh, I don't like it, I tried it, I didn't like it. That wasn't the case, but you've got to be confident about your business products or service if you're going to engage yourself in this whole area of global conversation that you are the best at what you do and you can justify what you do and how you do it and why you do it. Um, this is very, very important, though. Social media really works best as a social amplification tool. It needs a publicity point to be really effective. So on 19th of July, we've got a very sexy shave viral ad debuts on our YouTube and King of Shaves Facebook pages called Barbarella X. Um, we're starting to build momentum for that. That will debut, and then we'll then use social media to amplify that. And by social media, we'll serve ads on Facebook, maybe a billion ads um, worldwide um, in the UK, US, Australia, and New Zealand. And we'll get a word of mouth going about this particular ad, which is aiming to make shaving sexy again rather than just purely functional or celebrity endorsed or driven. If you don't have a publicity point and you're just saying random stuff on Twitter about what it is you may or may not be doing, there's no real hook to hang your um, brand or product or service on. And obviously the, the prime example of publicity points that are then use social media as an accelerant are, for example, the death of Michael Jackson. That trended incredibly quickly on Twitter, far quicker than news channels could keep up with. Um, I picked up on it about three minutes in just because I happened to be online. And the other one, of course, um, Susan Boyle, who came on to um, Britain's Got Talent, didn't look like she was going to make a great show of it, blew away people, and then within a matter of months was on Oprah. And that was the social media accelerant there with Twitter, then driving into YouTube views, then it driving into making her a celebrity. And she'd waited 40, 45 years for that to happen. So just keep in mind that as important as social media is, it does need a genuine raison d'etre, a genuine something to make it really work to your advantage. Um, and then in terms of you know, the, the content that I currently use, actually working backwards, um, I tweet often via Foursquare, which geotags where I am. Um, that then drops into my Twitter feed. Um, which then people, the followers, see. And I have sort of two sets of followers, about 3,000 in America, 2,000 in the UK. Um, and they're quality followers. They're not dross followers. They're not autobots, twitbots, stuff like that. They're actually really quite interesting people. And I use a couple of apps to see who they are and what they're doing and why they're following me. Um, Gillette, Wilkinson, Sword, follow me, Schick, et cetera, et cetera, which is quite, um, quite good. And that... Twitter feed then drops straight into the King of Shaves Facebook page, facebook.com slash King of Shaves, as a feed, and if you're interested on it, you can then comment on it. Um, and it's important from social media protocol that if you're posting in Facebook, you don't use sort of things like hashtags unless they're part of a Twitter feed, because that goes against sort of like the, the posting protocols there. And then from a content perspective, I write a couple of blogs. One's at King of Shaves blog, and one's at brandroyalty.com. And again, draw reference to those via Twitter. And those take longer to write, so they're a little bit more in-depth. I'm explaining why we've launched a new razor, why does you know, a Gillette cartridge cost £2.50 when it only costs, say, 10 pence to make, for example. Um, and those are more descriptive, and they're obviously mine. And I think the final thing is, as CEO founder of King of Shaves, I use common sense when I tweet, because once you've said it, it is out there forever. <laughs> forever. <laughs> And just keep that in mind. It's not a pub conversation with your mates down the pub about what you should or shouldn't be doing. The Sky Media chap I was with today, who's head of media there, says he's weaned himself off twittering after he's had a few pints of lager now because you never know what you might say and then how that might come round and bite you. So that's me, that's the brand, and um, thank you very much for listening.